Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Welcome to our afternoon service. Thank you for coming back and being with us and joining us today as we study the Word. God is so good, so merciful, so so good to us always in everything that we do. Um, we have been going through a new and upcoming manual that has not been released yet called Faith Under Fire. This is part five of that series. So if you're joining us, go back and listen to the other ones because this is a powerful re- uh, manual full of revelation um, and you're getting a sneak peek at what's to come. It's a work in progress still, but he's working hard to get this out there for you guys to uh, have on your bookshelves. <clears throat> uh, so uh, we're going to Start with Mark 11, 22 through 24, which we read last week, but we're going to actually get into that a little bit today. Uh, we'll start with prayer, and then we'll get into the word. Do you want to pray, Mama? Sure. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together. We just thank you for the opportunity to uh, study the Bible together and learn and Use this in our daily lives, and we just praise you and give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we are to guard or keep the word of God in our hearts, and the result of the word being kept in our hearts works like medicine to our bodies. Mark eleven twenty two through 24 also confirms this truth. We're going to start in verse 22. Okay. And Jesus answering saith unto him, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that these things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. God is good. Um, In the phrase, have faith in God, the word have means to hold, to possess, to own, to lay hold of, and to cling to. And the Amplified actually says to have faith in God constantly, which is consistent with the grammar of 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Um, And the word constantly means continuously, which depicts a lifestyle. Do you want me to read 2 Corinthians? Okay. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. So that matches, so that's what the pastor's saying. It matches up to have faith in God constantly. It's a consistent faith. Uh, When our faith is under pressure, it takes joy, patience, and wisdom to weather the storms of life. Keep this in mind because it's important. Verse 23 reveals the importance of saying or speaking our faith or what we believe out of our heart. Uh, uh, Again, you know, a little side note real quick. I remember a conversation I had with a pastor, and specifically about this uh, portion of scripture, because um, I had uh, asked him about confession and and um, you know what you know people saying things just randomly uh, that necessarily maybe in a joking manner, not necessarily something that they that was coming from their heart. And I said, well, won't it come to pass because they they said it? But he said, no. The qualifier is they have to believe. So you have to believe those things that you say in order for them to come to pass. Um, And Kenneth Hagin I was listening to this morning and he talked about when he got to verse 24 uh, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. It's not, he pointed out that you know just because people pray doesn't automatically mean they're going to receive what they're praying for if they're not believing. So the qualifier is you have to believe what you pray or what you say, then you shall have it. So also, uh, what did I lead off? I just rolled up and down and Uh, I'm going to start with this. Again, what we say does not start out as a confession. Okay. Again, what we say does not start out as a confession. Although it can lead to that, it starts out as a declaration of intent, like a command or demand. Although our confessions of faith are important, so is our declaration of intent. Also notice that we as believers are required to make sure that there is no doubt in our hearts. So saturate yourselves in the promises of God until you are thoroughly convinced that what God has promised you is yours. Then you can take authority over your situation 
And finally, what you've been saying will come to pass. Notice that what we are saying begins in and proceeds from the heart of the believer. Let's prove that this that statement out using verse 24 in the Amplified Classic. It says, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that is that it is granted to you and you will get it. The King James Version says, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. The Greek word for receive is translated as granted in the Amplified Classic, and it means to take possession of in your heart. We must possess the promises of God in our heart first, and then it will materialize into the physical realm. I really like what Pastor Walter was saying this morning again uh, in his teaching on um, spiritual hunger and thirst. And, you know, he in closing, he was talking about things that he uh, was pondering and uh, realizing he needed in his heart, and it became a reality of something that he actually possesses in his heart. And so uh, when it becomes a reality to you, when you receive it as real, as something, uh, as fact and truth, and can and can't be persuaded or 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 uh, you can't be your mind can't be changed on the matter, uh, then you've received it in your heart. Then it becomes something that is uh, something you actually possess by faith. I think one of the things that, especially today, for some reason, it's been impressed on me the. When you do these word studies um, in the Greek and the Hebrew, the intensity of the words that mm-hmm. are being used. Like, we're sitting here reading something, you know, believe you'll receive it and you shall have it. Okay, but when you take into account the intensity that was meant mm-hmm. in the in the Greek in that, it, you know, you it's very, in, in very intense mm-hmm. um, feelings. You know, searching for God, wanting, you know, that longing to know God. Mm-hmm. Um, those words are so intense in the in the Greek uh, language. Yeah. Anyway, one of the things that Pastor Walter always says is, is, um, is knowing the, the context and meaning behind the word and how important that is right. to studying what you're, what you're studying. And, you know, obviously, Pastor Walter, he's like one of the best Greek scholars there is. He's shaking his head. I knew he was going to shake his head at that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he set off with my head. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He said, knock it off. <laughs> God is good. <clears throat> so again, you must believe you possess what has been promised to you in your heart or what you have asked for before you get it. You have to believe that you possess it before you get it. Now, uh, Dave and I, uh, when we got married, we we were living in a condo that we were renting, and we were there for a couple years. And then um, right before Michaela was born, the owner of the condo lost the house in that big um, housing, I don't know what you call it, the foreclosure time when everything was foreclosing. And and so he was one of those people who lost his house. And so we had to move out. We, We got home one day, and there was a notice on our door saying someone bought the house at auction, and we had... To move out immediately and I was eight months pregnant with Michaela and we were like what do we do we had no idea it was even going to auction we didn't we were talking to the owner and he was working with us but then we didn't know that it was going to auction and um, so um, uh, you know in that moment we were not sure what to do our sister let it my sister let us stay with her for a couple months and while we were <laughs> My sister. <laughs> Dave said, my sister? No, my sister. <laughs> I'll share her. I'll share her. <laughs> but anyways, God is good. Um, so while we were there, we found a house around the corner from her house that came available for rent. And then we were there for uh, six or seven years, six and a half years. And while we were there, the whole time, uh, we were standing on the promise that God had had, had a house for us. And uh, specifically, a big house with lots of food. Pastor Walter knows what that means. <laughs> but we were standing on that promise that God had a house for us. And uh, we would host stuff at the house. And it would be too small. And people would, would say they were feeling overwhelmed because of how many people were there. It, was just, it truly was a small house. and so, um, But we just fully were fully convinced that God had a house for us because he promised it to us. And nothing could tell us otherwise that, that he wasn't going to bring that to pass in our lives. And... Uh, after six and a half, seven years we were there, we did 
finally get into the house that he had for us, and it's been a blessing to us ever since. And um, uh, but what I'm, the, the the point is is that you have to believe that you possess it before you have it. You have to believe before it will materialize in your life. Looking back to verse 23, we see that believing is a practice of the heart, for it says, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes. So it is clear both doubt and believing can proceed from the heart. In other words, this is the activity that takes place in the heart. So you can be a doubter or you can be a believer. <laughs> they both come from the same place. So that's a choice that you're going to have to make. Uh, and, 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 and you can, you have the power, you have the ability to make that choice, whether you're going to doubt the word and the promise or you're going to believe the word and the, and the promise in your life. So all of this points out how important it is to understand that receiving and overcoming begins and takes place in the heart of the believer as they continue to speak faith words out of their heart. So don't forget that step. You believe that you receive it in your heart. Then from that place of belief, you speak those words out and it will come to pass. Okay, and in Psalms uh, chapter 40, verse 8, it says, I delight to incline, to bend towards with pleasure, to pleasure, to do thy will, O my God. Yes, thy law is within my heart. Mm. And then Proverbs 7, verse 1 says, My son, keep, guard and protect my words, and lay up my commandments with thee. So the Amplified Classic Bible says, My son, keep my words, lay up within you my commandments for use when needed, and treasure them. <laughs> I like that. Treasure. That's a good one. Okay, now we'll read Proverbs. Okay, so in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, we're going to read verse 4 first. Um, he taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep, guard, and protect my commandments and live. So the word Hebrew word, <laughs> the Hebrew word for retain means to keep hold of, to grasp hold of, to seize hold of. This word carries the idea of securing something and locking it away, protecting it from thieves. And if you listen to uh, the podcast, Monica talks is talking about uh, living free from fear and anxiety. But she talked when she made it. She she gave an example today of of uh, a moment where a uh, scorpion was crawling up her arm, <laughs> and she didn't realize what it was at first. But when she saw it, she grabbed hold of it and threw it away. And so I don't. I know this isn't necessarily about about. She's talking about sudden fear coming on you and not allowing that to happen. You know, get rid of it quickly. Don't let it linger. Don't let it hold. But but also, like, be quick to guard and protect the the word, the promise in your heart, and don't let it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Don't. Don't let the enemy come in and steal that from you and rob from you that word. And we're going to read Mark uh, chapter 4 in a little bit. But let's, we'll read that after we finish in Proverbs. But we are to grab hold of the word of God and guard it and keep it safe within our heart, making sure the enemy of our faith does not steal the life-giving word or promises of God from us. So we'll, read, we'll finish reading Proverbs and then we'll read Mark. Okay. So continuing in Proverbs with verse 5. Um, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline, um, which means to pervert or turn away from the words of my mouth. Forsake her wisdom, not, and <laughs> forsake her not, which is as in referring yeah. to wisdom, <laughs> and she shall preserve thee. <laughs> Love her, and she shall keep and guard and protect these. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Good job, Mom. She did that good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> good recovery. <laughs> you know, when I, I'll, I'll be honest, I did the same thing when I read it the first time. It gives you pause. You're like, something doesn't sound right. But then when you actually look at it, you can see that pastor describing that the word her is referring to wisdom. So don't forsake wisdom. So right. anyways, I did that too, Mom. That's why I laughed. Anyways, we'll read Mark now. Okay. So Mark 4, chapter 4, verses 14 through 20, um, talks about the parable of the sower, which we hit on a couple of times this morning during things. Um, but the sower sows the word. The ones along the path, the, 
seeds that are sown along the path are those who hear that have the word sown in their hearts but when they hear satan comes at them at once by force and takes it away the message which is sown in them and in the same way the ones sown upon stony ground are the ones who when they hear the word at once accept and receive it and welcome it with joy and they have but they have no real root in themselves and so they endure for a little while then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they may immediately are offended, become displeased, indignant, resentful, and they stumble and fall away. And the ones sown among the thorns are others who hear the word. Then the cares and anxieties of the world and the distractions of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the raving and passionate desire for other things creep in and choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless and those sown on the ground the good ground well adapted soil are the ones who hear the word and receive and accept and welcome it and bear fruit sometimes some 30 times as much as was sown some 60 times as much and some even a hundred times as much yeah i really like that that's so good so that all comes back to the concept of of grabbing a hold of the word by faith, keeping your heart uh, pure, and not allowing the enemy to come in and rob from you the faith that you do have, because those those heart conditions that weren't that weren't good, where the enemy had access to, they, he comes in and he takes the word from them, and it can't produce in their life. And so, uh, we have the ability within our with given to us by God to be able to do this and be able to keep the word and not let it be taken from us. So the wisdom and understanding that the Lord has asked us who believe to keep, guard, and protect is found in his word. Knowledge and understanding comes from the word. And when we act on or do the word, wisdom is displayed and the promises will be seen in our life by all. And Proverbs chapter 3 verses 7 and 8 say, Be not wise in thine own eyes. For the fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health, healing, and a cure to thy navel, the center of strength, producing healing of your body and marrow to thy bones. Like how Pastor points out what the navel is. It's, it's that center of strength producing healing. In your, isn't that interesting? I have a girl at work who's teaching me um, Spanish. And one day she said, I said, happy midweek, when, you know, happy Wednesday, it's hump day. And she goes, we say happy navel day. <laughs> <laughs> center, the center. The center. That's funny. Okay. So the center of strength producing healing in your body. That's good. So to fear the Lord is an inner or heart condition that comes from a strong love and reverence. So it's not fear as in, I'm afraid of you, so I'm going to avoid you. It's, it, it, it's strong love and reverence i don't want to displease god by my actions by my uh lack of, of, of faith and in all that goes in that you know just in the same way i i strive really hard not to do something that would displease my pastor because i care very much about what he thinks what he feels and so what i do is a reflection of how i care for him and how I'm not going to do something that I know he wouldn't be happy with. That's love and reverence for, for a, you know, a person. In the same way we should be even more so towards God, our Father. You know, I remember as a teenager, after you had started coming here to church and that, I remember you telling me, and I remember this two or three times throughout the years, that you would say, I want so badly to serve the Lord. I don't want to do anything that isn't in service to him. Hmm. I remember that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking this morning while Pastor was teaching because he was talking, again, I know I've already said this, but he was talking about spiritual hunger and thirst. And, and, um, and I forgot about this, but I remember there was a time when I was uh, probably 11 or 12 and I was in my room. It was nighttime. The house was asleep. Everyone was in their own spaces. I don't know who was doing what, but I was in my room. <laughs> and I had my Bible. And I was reading my Bible. And I, you know what, that, in, that, in, that, in that time, you know, I had a certain understanding of Scripture, but I didn't have the, 
I, you know, I wanted more. I wanted a deeper understanding of the scripture. I wanted to be able to understand everything I was reading and not just read it and be like, what does that mean? Because that, that would happen often. And so I remember sitting there and, and I would start to pray. I was started to pray. And, um, and all of a sudden I started to, to just sob and just weep. And I just, I was begging God to use me. And I didn't even know what that meant. That was before I came here. I, I didn't know what that even meant. And I just said, please just use me. Whatever you want, just use me. And I don't, I don't, I, again, I was like 11 or 12, too young to know what that meant. There weren't people in our family that served in the ministry. I mean, we were raised in a home who, you know, where, where, where God was taught and God was loved, but no one in the family necessarily had served God up to that point. So I didn't know what it meant. And uh, I remember there was, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was driving down the road with pastor and he, um, God had showed him that, that moment in my life, that specific, very specific moment in my life. And he could describe everything from, you know, how my room probably looked at the time. And I remember being like, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. And, and, uh, and, and, and God, was showing Pastor Walter to remind me of that moment in time. And, and, and sorry, that just reminded me. I know it doesn't really go with the teaching, but <clears throat> anyways, I, I thought about that this morning while you were teaching, Pastor. So it produces, so th- to fear the Lord is an inner or heart condition that comes from sh- a strong love and reverence. It produces a high honor that creates a fear or dread of displeasing him. It's this kind of fear that causes us to move away from anything evil, any uh, something, anything evil. If any anything, it per, hold on. There's a typo here. It cause it's this kind of fear that causes us to move away from anything evil. It produces. I think. What is it trying to say? And it produces a steady flow of good health. I think that's supposed to be the word and. <laughs> Not any. Let me read that again, guys. It's this kind of fear that causes us to move away from anything evil, and it produces a steady flow of good health. You know, uh, I try real hard to keep up with Pastor, but sometimes I type the wrong word. <laughs> so I try to catch that. But anyways, it's important that we choose the fear of the Lord because it lies within the believer's ability. And we'll end, we'll end with this scripture. I know we have like seven minutes, but... I don't want to get into the next section yet. Okay, so in Proverbs 1, in verse 29, it says, For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Hmm. It's our choice. We have the ability to choose. And, and man, man, I dread not. I dread what would happen if that's not the choice I made. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I... I just can't imagine being faced with the choice to fear the Lord or, or, or do my own thing and, and live my life however I wanted without thought and consequence of consequence. And I just can't imagine what, that, what the result of that would be. Well, and I think, too, as you choose that pathway, you know, I want to be of service. I want to know more about God. I want to learn and to love God, as that builds within you, it just, life is so much better. I mean, you, you like you said, you can't imagine what it would be like if not. We, mm-hmm. But I come here to get renewed mm-hmm. every week. It's like, I could stay home easily, you know. There's all kinds of reasons I could think of to stay home. But, <laughs> you know, I think God gave his all for me. Mm-hmm. And the least I could do was come and give him a couple of hours on a Sunday, you know, here at church learning about him. Mm-hmm. And just to have that stirring within you, because as you, the more you understand, the more that that um, creates that stirring, that deep longing in you. Because um, I go away really blessed every week. Mm-hmm. You know, glad that I came. I love that verse that says that I was glad when they said unto me, let's come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. God is good. I like that. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for sitting with us mm-hmm. and helping read. You read a lot better than I do. Oh, yeah, right when I stumble into something that I... <laughs>
as I glanced over it made sense. <laughs> I oh, started yeah. to read it, it didn't. <laughs> well, I messed up on that one in my own time. <laughs> but, but anyways, God is good. We love you guys. Thank you guys for being with us and supporting this ministry and all that God is doing here. And you guys have last week. We will see you on Sunday morning. Don't forget about the podcast coming out on Tuesday. It will bless you. Have a good week. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.